Today we're going to have a look at some of the common words that we use in the algebra and what each of these words mean. So let's begin. Now in order to gain an understanding of some of these words, I want you to consider this rather long algebraic statement that I've got in front of me. Now in algebraic statements, we frequently use letters or symbols to represent values that are unknown to us. And it is these letters and symbols that we refer to as a variable. Now when we record an algebraic statement, it is very important that we're able to describe the different variables that exist within that statement. And this is where I often find a misconception lies. A lot of people will sit here and say, well, the variables are just those letters or symbols within a statement. So I just count how many there are. And in this statement, I've got six of them. However, there aren't six different variables. If you look at the statement carefully, you'll notice that there's only the letters A and B represented. Now, where a variable is represented more than once, that unknown number is the same throughout the algebraic statement. That means that this A written here is the same value as this A written here and this A written here. So if I was to identify the different variables in this statement, the different variables are A and B. Now, the next word that you'll hear a lot is the word term, and you'll hear it in different formats, like terms, unlike terms, constant terms, just to name a few. Now, terms are building blocks of algebraic statements, and you can think of a single term being an algebraic statement until you reach a addition or subtraction sign. However, it is vital to understand that terms include the addition or subtraction side before them. Now, in this statement here, the first term that we have can be seen in that 2a and stops just before the addition sign. However, the second term starts before that addition sign. So it includes that first addition sign and then it continues until we reach another addition or subtraction sign. And then the third term starts just before that subtraction sign and we continue on for the rest of this statement. So as you can see, we've got six total terms in this algebraic statement. So now we have an understanding what a single term is. What are like terms? Now like terms are two or more different terms that have the exact same variable form. But what does that mean? Well, if we look at the first two terms of this statement, the 2a and the plus 6a, and we only looked at the variables within each of these individual terms. In the first term, the variable is a. In the second term, the variable is also a. And we'll notice that the variable in the first term is identical to the variable in the second term. So these two equal each other. When the variables within two statements equal each other, we consider them to be like terms. Therefore, 2a and plus 6a are like terms. So what about two terms that don't have the same variable form? Well, we call these unlike terms. Let's take a look at an example using the third term and the fourth term. Now in the third term, the variable format is the B part of the term. In the fourth term, the variable format is the B squared part of the term. Now immediately when we write this down, we can now see that the variable parts of these two terms do not match each other. So they are not equal to each other. Therefore, they are unlike terms. Now the next word you might come across is constant terms. Now a constant term is any term within a statement that does not contain a variable. Now in our algebraic statement that we've got, there is only one constant term, and that is the sixth term that we have right here, that plus five. 
it doesn't have a variable within the term, so that way the value of that term is always the same. Hence the name constant term. So our constant term in this statement is plus five. And the final word that we'll look at with this particular statement is the word coefficient. Now a coefficient is the number factor of an algebraic term. In other words, it is the number part of each individual term, or what we generally write before any variable. Now if we look at it term by term, the first term, the number proportion, is the two that's just before the variable of a. So the coefficient of a here is two. In the second term, the number proportion is the plus six. So it is the plus six, which is the coefficient to the second a within this statement. Now in the third term, we've got subtract seven b. So when we talk the coefficient, we're talking the coefficient of b which in this case is the subtract seven. Now in the fourth term, you might initially look at it and go, there isn't a number portion of that term. So therefore, there mustn't be a coefficient. However, we've got to remember that whenever the coefficient is one, we don't actually write the one down. So in this statement here, it's actually negative one b squared or negative one lot of b squared. So therefore, our coefficient is subtract one. Now in our fifth term, we've got more than one variable. However, it's the number proportion of this term. The number portion of this is three. So it's the plus three, and we call that the coefficient of AB. Now in the sixth term, even though it has a number portion, we don't actually refer to this as a coefficient because we already call this a constant term. Now we've got an understanding of some of the common words we use to describe an algebraic statement. There are two common algebraic statements that exist, expressions and equations. There are actually more than two when we bring in inequities later on, but the two most common that we're gonna worry about right now are the expressions and equations. Now an expression is what we had before. An expression is formed by a group of terms that are simply added and subtracted to each other. An example of this would be say 2a plus 3b. I've got two terms here that are being added together, so this we refer to as an expression. Now an equation is different from an expression because it joins two expressions together with an equal sign. So an example of an equation might be 2a plus 3b equals 17 take c. So now I've got two separate expressions here that have been joined together by an equal sign. And we call these equations. So now it's your turn to have a go. I want you to practice your understanding of these algebraic words with the problem in front of me.